Welcome to Glen Carlo. My name is Johan and I'm the GM here and with me I have Arco Larman who happens to be our head winemaker. Hi everybody. Glen Carlo is considered a premium producer of uh, both white and red wines here in South Africa and we are very proud that we have now successfully completed 26 20. vintages. Um, and um, we are located of course in Paul and uh, our location here is quite unique. We uh, have the Simonsburg right behind us and this plays a very, very important part in the terroir here at Glen Carlo. We have these beautiful cool breezes at night that, that cools down the vineyards yeah. significantly, which drives our, our fruit acid. Um, the soils mostly decomposed granite? Yeah, so we've got uh, mainly decomposed granite soils up in the top part of the farm, um, where we have our quartzstone vineyard. Uh, then we also have some shale and uh, some sandstone. Um, our soils are not that deep, um, usually five to six feet, and we reach sort of a clay subbase that holds back restriction of growth on the, on the vines and um, uh, also uh, impacts our yield. So we usually have eight to ten ton maximum per hectare on, on, on all the varieties we have. So the main varieties we, we work with is, is Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Malbec, uh, Petit Vido, Cabernet Franc, and then uh, Shiraz and Mouvedre, and have small plantings of Tanat and uh, Viennier and Chenin Blanc, just for experimental purposes. So today we are going to be tasting the ca classic Cabernet Sauvignon 2011, Arco. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit about the vintage, uh, was it a good year for you? Yeah. Um, so I think we're very lucky. We, we, we get pre pretty consistent um, weather in Paul. Um, we are warmer than some of the other regions like Stellenbosch and, and uh, Elgin and those areas, but we tend to get much cleaner uh, fruit, fruit clarity and um, uh, not, not restrictive tannins on, on, the, on the cab. But because we have these cool breezes, which I referred to early on, we do get good phenolic ripeness. On our yeah. without the alcohols getting too high. Yeah, it's, 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 it's something you've got to monitor and, 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 and that, that's definitely done also with, um, with the, our irrigation program and that, yeah. And just a little bit more about uh, the actual uh, vinification process, Arthur? Yeah, we, um, it, it comes in, usually the caps come in around um, beginning to, uh, to middle of March and uh, we pick everything by hand and uh, it then gets um, fermented in... Um, you 10 ton fermenters, uh, three aerates of pump overs a day. And towards the end of the harvest, uh, I'm able to keep uh, the Cabernet on, on skins for up to three, three weeks uh, extended maceration um, to get the tannin structure right. And uh, then uh, press lightly and keep press two separate. And then uh, two barrel, either new barrels, um, partial new barrels and uh, second, third, fourth full barrels for up to 18 months. But the, the purpose, really, with the barrel regime is to retain the freshness and the primary fruit characters of the wine sure, without yeah. masking it with too much work. No, right? exactly, yeah. Um, I think those days of overuse of oak are, are gone and people want more cleaner what grapes taste like, not, 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 uh, not wood. Well, they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's give it a go. <laughs> So just while you're pouring the wine, Arco, really beautiful ruby kind of red color. Yeah, it's, it's still got a useful plum skin sort of, uh, sort of thing going, which is, which is really nice. Let's give it a go. Yeah, that's, it's, it's typical of what, what, what we get in, in, in our Cabernets uh, in, in the aromatics is it's more that, that violet, um, a little bit of eucalyptus, but not 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 on the negative side. Um, some people f get that, but if if it's if it's balanced correctly, is 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 nice. Um, on on the wood side, a little bit more of that sandalwood, um, little slight tobacco tobacco tones, but um, not overly so. But a beautiful combination of both black and red fruit. Yeah, that we, yeah. That we get on this one. Yeah, again, um, n nice clean fruit. Um, because we're that warmer area, we get much softer, supple tannins. Um, I don't like greenness uh, in in red wines, um, and so that bell pepper they talk about, or um, uh, 
that sort of that uh, um, green greenness uh, as, asparagus and that sort of thing so um, we get a lot lot more softer tannins so the wine is much more um, easy approachable at a younger age which which is the way people drink wine today um, you may have people aging wines for 10 15 years but research should be done that wine is consumed within 24 hours of being purchased so hopefully uh, this wine's the same but really a wine that and it's always been with Glen Carlo uh, a, a, a fact that you know the wines always over deliver particularly on price point yeah for and, sure and yeah going back to a little bit more commercial you know it, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a consumer proposition that's really really good and um, an easy drinking full-bodied red wine with soft tannins and just really accessible yeah and you can it, it's, a, it's a wine that's that's delicate enough to drink on its own but um, also pairs well with uh, with nice fine red red meat dishes um, but also good with some pasta dishes yeah as well yeah very much yeah. so I hope you guys enjoy the new 2011 Cabernet